With the new design and new additions like USB-C and new camera sensors, the iPhone 15 lineup and the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max specifically have been one of my favorite upgrades to the iPhone lineup in general. But in the very beginning, we had some issues with things like overheating and terrible battery life, and I want to go back to the days of the iPhone 13 Pro Max when we got two days of heavy usage out of one single charge. So in this video, what I want to do is show off seven different tips that you can kind of implement today for an actual improvement of your battery life and really get a full day's use out of your iPhone 15 Pro Max because for $1,100 or $1,200, your iPhone should last you the entire day. So without further ado, let's get into these tips and tricks and leave a comment down below about what your favorite one is or if you learned something new. But let's get into it. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into what my first tip is gonna be, which is what I tell everybody to do when they are looking to improve their battery life overall, no matter which iPhone you have, which is go into your settings and then go down to where it says battery. This is going to be where you're gonna find out exactly how much apps are taking up. Now, the next thing I always do is go over the last 10 days because this gives you a nice kind of rolling average of how much screen time you're getting. So you're able to see here that I'm getting about eight hours and one minute of active screen on time and almost three hours of average screen idle time. And now the tip here is that yes, you can see exactly from a percentage standpoint which applications are taking up the most battery. So you can see that YouTube takes about 25% of my battery, the camera about 10%, messages about 6%. But if you press on show activity, then you get another breakdown where, right here where it shows on screen and then background. So the applications that are using stuff in the background, those are the applications that you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on and make sure that you're deleting them from your multitasking menu because things like X taking up about an hour of background time, you know, that adds up very quickly. Same with Spotify. Now Spotify is a little bit different because it is music that you're playing. Like I use Spotify when I'm running and things like that. So 10 hours of background usage makes sense for me. But something like YouTube, for three hours out of the week, I do not need it to be running in the background. So definitely go in here, start to analyze a little bit of what's going on. You see USB-C accessories, FaceTime, photos, takes up stuff in the background because it's automatically syncing your photo stream and your iCloud photos. So that is the first tip, go in here, analyze what's going on, and then make sure that you are turning off all the background refreshing, as well as actually quitting out of these applications totally. And then the next thing that you're gonna see is that up here, if there is something, for instance, maybe you have your auto locked never to be turned on, there will be some suggestions right here that pop up to let you know, like, hey, you should actually be doing this in order to save a little bit more battery life. But that is what we're dealing with for the first tip. Go into the battery section and just analyze what your battery usage is overall. So the next tip is gonna be very, very simple and it's gonna be low power mode. If you're ever in a pickle, low power mode is going to make your phone what well, seems like last forever, which is absolutely amazing. But low power mode by default turns on at the 20% mark. So it will ask you like, hey, if you get to 20%, do you wanna turn on low power mode to make sure that it lasts a little bit longer? And it says that low power mode temporarily reduces background activity like downloads, mail fetch, until you can fully charge your phone. Then you can turn it on multiple ways. You can turn it on from the battery section. You can see that it's a yellow battery indicator. You can also turn on low power mode from your control center, which by default is not on there, but very easy to add, but I like to keep it in there. So the way that you add it is go into your control center in settings, scroll down to where you find the low power mode, which is right here, mine's already added, and then just add it to your control center so you have quick and easy access and you can also ask Siri to make sure that you are on low power mode. So low power mode, if you are in a pickle, or even if you wanna just start off the day with low power mode, you will get a lot farther on your day if you start with low power mode. So the next one has to do with auto lock, screen brightness, and the always on display that we got with the 14 Pro and the 15 Pro and the Pro Maxes respectively. But the first thing I want you to notice is that if we go back to that battery setting that we talked about for tip one, you might notice that the home and lock screen is actually taking up a little bit more than what we're used to. So, and that is because of that always on display as well as the auto lock feature. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually go into your settings, go into display and brightness, and then make sure that your auto lock is actually turned on. As you can see from me, it's on to never. And the reason I have it on to never is because I make videos like this and I don't want it to turn off in the background. But for most people, I'm gonna recommend 30 seconds. So that means if your screen is turned on idle and nobody's messing with it and you're not, it's not kind of reacting to anything, then it will actually lock your phone, which is something that will save a lot of battery life. So definitely make sure that that is turned on. And then in the same light, like I mentioned with the always on display, the 14 Pro, Pro Max, and then the 15 Pro and Pro Max have an always on display. So if you go into your always on display settings, if you really wanna save a bunch of battery, you could probably save an extra 2% battery if you just completely turn it off. So you can actually just completely turn off always on display and it's gonna be like a normal iPhone but what I like to do is actually keep it turned on but make sure that the wallpaper is not shown because if I show the wallpaper and then lock the screen 
you can see that in the background, it's using up a little bit more light and it's gonna light up those pixels in order to give me that background, which is something that I don't want. So what I like to do is actually turn off the show wallpaper section right there. So if I do lock the screen, I'm still able to see things like time and notification, but it is a completely blacked out screen, which turns off those pixels and makes my battery life last a little bit longer. So depending on who you are and what your situation is, you can decide, but the best case scenario is to completely turn it off. Then you have your medium case scenario, which is this one. And then the quote unquote worst case scenario is going to be leaving the wallpaper turned on. So this next one is a big one, and this has to do with location services. And the first thing I'm gonna recommend is that whenever you download a new app or re-download an app from the App Store, the moment you open it, it's gonna ask you if it wants to track. Make sure, unless it's like something like Google Maps, make sure that it's turned off at all times because if not, it's going to be constantly looking for your location services the entire time in terms of where you are for each of those applications. But if you go into settings and then scroll down to where it says privacy and security, you will have a location services option right at the top. So right here is where you can go through every single app and change the setting for each one. So for instance, if I go into Air Canada, you have different options, right? So first off, you have never, ask next time or when I share, while using the app or always, and then you also have precise location. So for the most part, for I would say 99% of applications, you wanna make sure that this is turned on to either never or ask next time just in case. And secondly, you wanna have precise location turned off. Now precise location is something that's, you know, Google Maps and Apple Maps and something maybe like DoorDash or Uber Eats would want to know because the precise location is very important for maybe that Uber to pick you up or for the Uber Eats driver to drop it off at your door versus somebody else's door. But for something like Air Canada or something like the Apple Store or maybe something like Best Buy, you don't really need any of that to be turned on because why does Best Buy need to know your precise location? You know, if you're in a situation where that needs to be done, then by all means go for it. But make sure you go in here and go through every single one because this will save you a lot of battery because when it's looking for your location in the background, that will take up a decent amount of battery and you will notice that over time. So make sure you go in here, turn off the ones that you don't need, and then you should see your battery life increase over time, which will be a good thing to see. And then I do want to briefly bring up hot and cold temperatures because depending on where you live, this could have an effect on your battery life. And as a Tesla owner or an EV owner, and I live in the Northeast, so I see the effects of what a cold climate can do to an actual battery. So when I am in the cold climate, my car can't go nearly as far as it can when it's in a warmer climate. And the same thing goes for anything that runs on lithium batteries. So for the most part, you want to stay in the range of 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 95 degrees Fahrenheit in that room temperature kind of standpoint. If it stays there, then it's going to be the optimal temperature. But if you're in a situation where it's too cold, make sure to keep your phone closer to your body. And if it's too hot, make sure you take the phone off of direct sunlight or take the case off because I have had my phone be in an extremely warm situation when it's maybe on my dashboard of my actual car and the sun is beaming on it. And that's going to really hurt the battery life, not only in the short term, but also in the long term. So that's something to take into account. So another huge battery drainer, like I mentioned earlier, is that when you compare Wi-Fi to data, Wi-Fi is always better or more beneficial for battery life. But then also in that same light, if you compare something like a 4G LTE versus a 5G, 5G takes up so much more battery than 4G, so I always personally keep it turned off. Again, again, I'm in a situation where I'm on Wi-Fi most of the time, and when I am out and about, LTE is fast enough for me to stream a video in 1080p or for me to be able to message somebody or for me to be able to get my day-to-day -day stuff done. So I don't really need to have have 5G or that ultimate 5G because first off, I'm on T-Mobile, so the millimeter wave isn't really something that happens too often, and I'm never in those situations where I'm getting those one gig download speeds. So 5G is maybe a 10% increase in terms of speed, maybe. So in order to keep that turned off, you're going to want to go into cellular, then go into your actual primary, and then what you're going to want to do is go to voice and data, and I, like I said, always have LTE on. Definitely never do 5G auto because not only will the 5G take up more, but then the switching between LTE and 5G takes up more battery. 5G is if you really need it, but LTE is more than enough for most people, in my opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I do it. Do not use 5G if you don't have to because it takes up a lot more battery. And then one last thing that I do want to bring up, it's a little bit more on the extreme side, but if you really want to save your battery, you definitely want to do this. You're going to want to go into your settings and then you're going to scroll down to where it says accessibility and then you're going to want to go into motion. So if you do reduce motion, first let me show you what it looks like before that. So if I swipe up, you can see the animation of it kind of like getting smaller. But if I press reduce motion, it turns that effect into kind of like a kind of like a transition. So that motion is now gone, which means it's actually less power and less intensive over time. Because imagine how many times a day you open and get out of an application. So that over time is going to help out. And you can see that even with animations like going into multitasking, it's going to change it a little bit. For me, I personally like to keep this turned off because I like the animations. But again, you can see that some other things open up here. So autoplay animated images, you know, you can do the preferred crossfade transitions. And then the last thing I will bring up is the limit frame rate. So again, if you have a 15 Pro or Pro Max, part of the reason why you get it is because you do get that 120 hertz ProMotion 
which is very fluid, but at the end of the day, it does take up twice as much battery as a 60 hertz display. So if you wanna limit it and tap on that right there, it's going to limit it to a 60 hertz display, which does make it move a little slower. You do get used to it over time, and if you're somebody that's coming from a regular 15 or regular 14, you will not notice a difference, so definitely turn that on right away to make sure you're saving battery life. But those are all the tips that I have. Definitely implement them little by little or all at once, and let me know what you end up doing. So that will just about do for this video, everybody. And if you implement any of these tips and tricks, it will drastically increase your battery life overall on day-to-day -day use because there's a lot of features and kind of little things in the background, little nuances that Apple doesn't really tell you about that's always happening and really being a detriment to your battery life. So with these improvements, I'm able to get probably two full days of use on like, you know, light to medium usage on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The 15 Plus is probably the one that has the best battery life because it does only have a 60 hertz display and it's not being pushed to the 10th degree like the 15 Pro Max is but it still has that same form factor any larger battery so if you have a 15 plus that should get you about two full days of use on medium to heavy usage but your mileage may vary depending on what you end up using your iphone for but leave some comments down below of maybe something that you learned in this video or even a tip that you've been using that i didn't mention in this video that really helps out the battery life overall but if you guys made it to the end of the video leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so i know you made it to the end and if you guys want to watch more ios ipad os vision os or mac os content click on one of these videos right here but until next time i'm fernando and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.